So, the idea of this podcast is to give you some questions about the divergence in vector calculus that you can solve. So, what you should do is write the questions down on a piece of paper, tackle them, and then you can come back and see whether you've got them right or wrong. In the information on the YouTube channel, it will have links to the answers to each of the questions. So, write them down, pause, and come back. So, you should be pausing the video now. So, welcome back, and we can now move on and get some feedback on how we have been able to tackle the questions. So, here is the answer to the first question. We want to calculate the divergence of a vector field, and the definition of the divergence is written here in three dimensions. You take the coefficient of the vector in the x direction and differentiate it with respect to x, and similarly in the y direction you differentiate it with respect to y, and then the coefficient here in the z direction you differentiate it with respect to z, and we add those three terms together, and this gives us a scalar. So, in this particular example, we have zy in the x direction, we differentiate that with respect to x, and we then add the derivative with respect to y of this coefficient, which is x, and then we add the derivative with respect to z of this coefficient, being careful to retain the minus sign with respect to z. So here, from the rules for partial differentiation, there is no x dependence here, so this vanishes. There is no y dependence here, so this derivative also vanishes. And here we have minus z squared, and when we differentiate that with respect to z, we get minus 2z. So our result for the divergence of this vector field is minus 2z. And I emphasize again, the divergence is a scalar. So with that, we can move on to the next question. The second question is to calculate the divergence of r, where r is the position vector xi plus yj plus zk, and this is given here in three dimensions again. So using the definition from the previous example, the divergence is obtained by differentiating this with respect to x, and then adding to it the derivative of this with respect to y, and then adding to that the derivative of this coefficient with respect to z. And each of these derivatives is 1, so we have 1 plus 1 plus 1, which gives us 3. And the divergence of the position vector is 3. And I'll let you think about it, but you can fairly straightforwardly see that if you had a position vector in, say, two-dimensional space, you would get 2 for the divergence, and if you were to go to a four-dimensional space, you would get 4, and in d-dimensions, the divergence would be d. So, with that, we'll move on to the next question. So, this question, we want to calculate the divergence of this vector field. As before, here is our definition. So, we have to differentiate this with respect to x and add to it the derivative of this with respect to y and then add to it the derivative of this with respect to z. So we have the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus the derivative with respect to y of yz plus the derivative with respect to z of minus e to the z. This gives us 2x, this gives us z, and this is minus e to the z, and this is our result for the divergence of this vector field. So with that, we'll move on to the final exercise. So in this exercise, what we want to do is to show this identity. So we are calculating the divergence of a vector field multiplied by a scalar field. So this is overall a vector, but the vector field is multiplied by a scalar. And the identity says that 
you can calculate the gradient of the scalar field and then work out the scalar product of this vector with the vector field and add to it the scalar field multiplied by the divergence of the vector field here. So if we imagine that phi is a constant, for example, then this gradient would be zero and we would just be pulling the constant here through the divergence operator. But if phi is not a constant, we also get this term. So let's see how that works. So from our definition of the divergence, which we've written down a couple of times in this video, what we have to do is differentiate phi times the first component of the vector field A with respect to x, and then add to it the other terms, but here we have A2, the component in the y direction, and here we have A3, the component in the z direction. So we have to add these three derivatives, and here we see products, so we're going to use the product rule. And what I've done here is I've written out the result because here we're going to get the derivative of phi with respect to x times a1 and we're also going to have the phi times the derivative of a1 with respect to x so those are those two terms there and I've just written them in this ordering such that all of the terms where we differentiate phi with respect to x from here with respect to y from here and with respect to z from here I've written those in one line, and the terms where the derivative acts upon the components of the vector a, I've written here. And now when we look at this, well, let's look at the bottom term first, that's perhaps the simplest. Phi is a common factor that we can pull out, and it's multiplying dA1 dx plus dA2 dy plus dA3 dz, and that is the divergence of the vector a. So those three terms give us this. Here we recognize that we have the derivative of phi with respect to x multiplied by a1, derivative of phi with respect to y multiplied by a2, and the derivative of phi with respect to z multiplied by a3. And this is a scalar product, and it is the scalar product of the gradient of phi with a. So just recall that the gradient of our scalar field phi is d phi dx i plus d phi dy j plus d phi dz k and the scalar product of this with the vector a gives us this. So we have proven the identity and with that I'm going to stop this podcast and I hope that calculating these various exercises has helped you better understand the divergence and given you feedback on your understanding.